Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Today, what I am going to be doing is cracking open a brand new to me game. This is a copy of Shikoku, which comes from Grand Gamers Guild, who worked with GDM, GDM Games, to get this from Kickstarter out to the market. So this is a retail copy of Shikoku, and I do have to thank Mark from Grand Gamers Guild for getting me a copy of this all the way from Gen Con up here in Canada. So that's awesome. Thank you, Mark. Uh, this is one of the most unique board games I've ever heard of. Um, and I have nothing like it in my collection until now. So I am really looking forward to checking this out. And the whole thing with this game is that you are going up a path to a temple, uh, the Shikoku temples. And the thing is, you don't want to be first because who wants to be first? You're the first person at the temple. You lose if you're first. You also don't want to be the slow poke and be last. You lose if you're last. Other than that, there are two winners. The person who's second to first and second to last wins a game of Shikoku. Like, who came up with this? That just sounds so different and interesting compared to most of what games I own. Now, of course, for that to work, you do need at least three players. If you play with three players, it's a player in the middle who wins. Uh, but it does play up to eight, and that's what I'm looking forward to. I am looking forward to a big group game of this. Everyone racing and slowing down and trying to be in the middle of the pack while trying to get to the Shikoku Temple. But before we can get to actually playing and trying it, I do have to open the box, so it's time to get to that. Okay, here we go. Cracking open my copy of Shikoku for the first time. We have, of course, the instructions. Uh, this one is listed as 8 plus 3 to 8 players, about half an hour per game. It shouldn't be a very thick one. This is not a heavy, complicated game. Again, the goal is don't be first, don't be last. The way you're going to do that is play a number of cards. There's this whole thing called the Mantra Zone where you're going to be moving your meeple from one card to another to draft it and then getting a pick of what's left. Uh, again, this is not a how to play video for that. You can go find those online or maybe I'll record one once we actually get this one played. But for now, I just want to look at the components and I got to say, look at that. That's it. There's your rules. Three pages. Uh, four, I guess, if you can. Yeah, the objectives here. So four pages. Lots of examples here. Not a lot of text. Um, some very small font blue boxes with uh, with call outs. Those are the actual examples. Could be used to be a little bigger, but hey, that's fine. Next, we've got the board. It's not much, but it works. It's, it's, it's effective, I would say. It's a path. Now, it won't quite fit on my board, but you're going to start at step number one, and you're working your way up to step 33. Um, one part that's interesting is no one has been able to tell me why these are a different color. Like just, oop, you're getting near the end. As far as I can tell, that doesn't have any gameplay effect. Um, a nice touch is the, the numbers are in two languages here, which is kind of cool. And I got to say, it's, it's got some really nice looking artwork for basically what's just a track. That's it. And I get it. That's a nice bonus, too. Don't need art on the back of the board, but it's cool. We've got a trough insert. So one thing I'm going to point out right away. Oh, bonus baggie. Is except for this board, which I don't know, you probably could have done rolled up. That's not a lot of contents for this size of box, even though it's already a pretty small box. So that's it. That's all we get in here. We have one bag, I guess, to put all the cards in, which I'll keep that out. We're going to move that out of the way. Next, we have Meeple. They're Meeple. They're pretty much, as far as I can tell, just your standard Meeple. There are two in each player color, one to keep in front of you so you know what color you are and everyone else knows what color you are, and one to put on the map. I'll pull one of these out, but if you've seen one Meeple, you've basically seen them all. That is a meeple. Wooden meeple. Now we get to the cards. Interestingly, there's like bonus card with one sandal. Uh, sandal show how far you move. Uh, this is showing the collaboration of the two companies that are working together here. Then we get to just a Shokoku card. So the reason companies do this is people who print cards do them in standard card sets. So you often end up with an additional set of cards you're going to use. Then there's a rule summary card. There are eight of these for eight players. It fully explains how the card drafting works, because that's probably the most confusing part of the game. Then we have another just Shikoku card. Then we get to the actual cards of the game, which again, I got to say, I dig the evocative artwork. 
here. I, I don't know, something about that aesthetic I really dig. And on the other side, they're numbered. So this shows how far you move, and this shows your initiative. So this player is going to get to act first and move up three steps. This player is going to act second and go up four steps and so on. And you have that in numbers all the way up to 33. And that's it for the deck. It's 1 to 33 with various number of footy prints, sandals for how quick you go up. So again, the whole goal of this game is don't be first, don't be last. You have another card to show which color you are. And I've got to say already, I have not played this game. I really kind of want to play a um, variant where you don't know who's what color. <laughs> but I guess that probably won't work. But that's what this reminds me of. So these are just two-sided. One meeple is for drafting cards. You're going to move it around drafting cards. This is to show in front of you what color you are. So that's it. That's all you get. Not a lot, right? This is this is kind of a bit of a disappointment. I'm, I'm reminded of some other games that have a lot of wasted space. Um, I don't know. That board could have just been a track you laid out with cards. It looks cool, though. I am not really complaining, but I'm pointing it out because I know lots of people who hate buying boxes with lots of air. Personally, I like being able to see games on my shelves, and I fully understand that board game publishers have to deal with shelf space, and people need to spot this. And if it's too small, people are going to think it's a small game and not worth their money. So I fully understand it, but I want to point out that's a lot of error for a board game box. Boom. Okay, not a lot to say about this. This, again, is my shiny new copy. Oh, it's less shiny because I cut the shrink wrap off it, but hey, my new copy of Shikoku. A three to eight player, I don't know what to call it. It's 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 a race, but it's not because you don't want to be first and you don't want to be last. So it's like it's it's a slow pace up the path game. Uh card driven, where you're gonna draft cards that determine what player order you go in, as well as how many steps you're gonna take. And again, the entire goal is to be the second to last or the second person to make it to the temple. Now, the game does end as soon as one person hits the temple, so it's not a race to the finish either. Stops as soon as someone's there, you look on the track, you determine who wins, boom, done. Now, I know some people aren't going to like the fact that two players win, but you know what? That's just part of what makes this game unique, and that's what I like the most about this game. And I've got to say, visually, it's very appealing. Wooden meeples, they work. They're meeples. There's a reason we've been using meeples for, uh, what, 20, 30 years now? They work. Uh, they're effective. The cards look pretty and look very easy to see from across the table. Absolutely zero reading required. I could see playing this one with younger kids. It says eight plus, but I'm thinking as long as you have a kid that can count, actually, this would be a great teaching tool to help kids to count and moving along track. I think that'd be great. Really looking forward to trying out Shikoku uh, as soon as I can get a big enough group to play because I have a feeling three is going to be okay, but it's going to really shine at a higher player count. So that's it for my look at Shikoku from. I always keep forgetting it, sorry, GDM Games and Grand Gamers Guild. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Head over to our website, tabletopbellhop.com, for other awesome gaming content, including news, reviews, and answers to your gaming questions. If you got a game night question for me, send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or head to that webpage and click on Ask the Bellhop. That's it for this unboxing video. Thank you so much for joining me. Good night and game on.